Scholar in the Computing and Mathematical Science Department at the California Institute of Technology under the guidance of Professor Adam Beerman and uh, Professor Eric Mazumdar. He has heard, he has earned re uh, recognition as a PIMCO postdoctoral fellow in uh, data science. Before embarking on his postdoctoral journey, he successfully attained his PhD from Texas AM University in August 2023 under the mentorship of Professor Philip uh, Kalajan. Prior to his doctor studies, he around machine learning, particularly in addressing challenges related to autonomous solutions in real world scenarios. His focus lies in developing global solutions by building into theoretical foundations of reinforcement learning algorithms aimed at bridging the gap between simulation and real world performance. Today, we are fortunate to have him share his insight from his research work titled Jobus Reinforcement Learning Using Offline Data. So without further ado, let's extend a warm welcome to Dr. Kishan and pass the floor over to him. Thank you. Thank you for the uh, uh, Hi, well, I'm Kishan. Uh, hi, Professor Vangra. Uh, I've been an uh, alumni of the IIC in 2015 and 2017 from EC department. I work with uh, Dr. Rajiv uh, Sumrathan there. Um, yeah, today I'm very fortunate to like, present our uh, uh, PSU work and uh, revolving around robust reinforcement learning. Uh, since this is a very small group, uh, Please feel free to ask uh, uh, as many questions as you like. Uh, so here are my publications. Um, so most of my uh, research uh, is revolving around the reinforcement learning uh, related uh, problems, uh, and I've also worked on uh, multiple multi unbounded problems and uh, contextual bounded problems. Um, yeah, in this talk, I'll be focusing on a uh, few of papers. Uh, Um, yeah, so um, I'll be focusing on the first three uh, highlighted papers, which revolves around robust reinforcement learning, uh, particularly with the offline data. Yeah, uh, before moving on, like, let me like, introduce the problem and uh, really motivate what the robust reinforcement learning is all about. Uh, and then I'd like to thank my collaborators, like Philip Kalatin, who is my PhD advisor, as we mentioned. And uh, the Zion is one of the, uh, the new PSA candidates who have been helping him uh, bring up future uh, 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 And then we have been collaborating with uh, Dr. Mohammed Manzali. He is like an expert in uh, this set of uh, and, uh, those uh, safety kind of issues in the enforcement learning problems. So, yeah, as you all know, like the enforcement learning these days is a class of learner problem uh, where you would want to learn an optimal sequence of actions in an unknown environment uh, to like, maximize some objective of cumulative long term reward. And here is a picture which like, typically represents uh, what creating personal learning is all about. Uh, there's a learning algorithm which interacts with the environment via some action and it gets to see like, observations and rewards. And the goal is to like, find a cumulative long term reward. And as an example, that learning algorithm is a neural network. It interacts with the autonomous vehicle via some actions of steering wheel, and then it gets to see some LiDAR data or something like that. And then we would want to like uh, the reward is like how well you're driving and so on. Uh, and then reinforcement learning has seen some very signing successes since 2015, like last uh, 10 years or so. For example, uh, DeepMind came up with DQM to play like Atari games at uh, human level players. Uh, and then uh, they also came up with Alpha Zero and so on to play other games. And then there uh, are like many applications like robotics where reinforcement learning has been like very really successful in. And then recently there have been like works on recommendation systems and the uh, real world like, deployment of policies and uh, uh, by NSA and Google. <coughs> But all of these like uh, reinforcement learning algorithms are based on like very structured and simulated environments. What I mean is like RL algorithms are typically trained on a simulator. 
But the thing is, the nervous system parameters can be different from what the simulator is all about. Can't uh, represent the real world system by a single simulator. Uh, that is because uh, due to like approximation errors in the system modeling itself, the changes in the real world parameters as well. And then there are I mean, like adversarial disturbances which you can't like uh, really model in a simulator. Uh, just to give an example, in the vertex mass friction and those kind of physics parameters can be different. And then this has been observed uh, in particular papers that if you, if you train a, um, like your RR algorithm on a simulator and deploy this on a real robot, then it might not perform really well. So this gap is uh, termed as seem to real gap. And then this issue is not hypothetical, it's they are really being like. Uh, research in both industry and uh, academia really well. Uh, and then it's a very hard problem. Uh, so it's been like continuous. Uh, and then well, the theoretical notions of sim to real gap is really missing when it comes up industry and academia. So that is why we want to come in uh, this uh, robust reinforcement planning. <laughs> so this is the high level, like broad third question, which I want to ask and solve uh, why it's not for you. Um, so, how do we develop like scalable RL algorithms when the system parameters between simulator and real world change is different? So, towards this, I can now stay towards like one of the papers I've been publishing in the year of It's titled Global Synchronous Mental Energy Complex Data. Uh, so, yeah, um, let us use the usual framework of uh, MDPs uh, in this work. So, MDP, as you all know, it's a uh, couple of states, action, and the transition function, which we call as a model here. And an example, like in a grid word problem, the state can be the grid position, and the actions can be the direction in which they can move, and the dynamics itself is, uh, depends on the environment which the robot is played with. So in this talk, I'll call a model of the system as a transition function. It can also include the reward function as well, but uh, as that is pretty like there is no like hardness. Uh, it's a hardness coming in the picture. So I have to keep uh, things simple in this part. Let me just consider the transition function as a model. And then the policy is just the mapping from state now. How do this thing is it to assume that the LTP has a single uh, step level? Right. Uh, yes. Uh -huh. So looking at here versus like this. So that, that, that's where I'll come in picture later. Yeah, this is the classical MDP. I'll uh, stay towards uh, what C2 real gap uh, like framework which we are using. We, we use the robust version of this uh, Jasper MDP. I'll come in two slides. So I just wanted to like uh, give a quick notion of what the uh, classical MDP notion is. It's really useful to like, represent the um, sequential decision problems like uh, the robot. Yeah. So, which, uh -huh. so I need to take the, the parameter with simulation and the real world to specify what that works well on the model between the two. Make those choices. Yeah, yeah. I'll make those choices clear in a few words. Yeah, I just wanted to explain the motivation of uh, the MDP usage here. Yeah. So uh, before moving on to like what the exact model for robustness is uh, about. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, uh, this is just like, uh, okay. The uh, exact positions of the uh, robot can be stayed and then the actions applied to the actuator, the limbs and so on can be the actions. And then uh, we get to see rewards based on the time state of action, like how well the robot is moving. And then the dynamics itself is the physics involved. Yeah. So this, uh, the action is taken corresponding to the policy, which we are currently under by. And then uh, we get to see the next state uh, from the dynamics itself. What's the dot in that bias? Oh, this is a uh, distribution. Yeah. Oh, uh, this is, uh, okay, uh, then spy is a distribution on this action, the set of actions. So yeah. 
can use deterministic policies later on. So this is just to make uh, more. Uh, so yeah, uh, what's the learning problem? I will quickly show it. Uh, I have like, pose the learning problem and then move towards the simple real gap problem, which we are all interested in. So. Other problem, as you all know, is to learn the optimal policy when the underlying dynamics are unknown. And the offline reinforcement learning problem is the same question, but we ask it only when access, uh, having access to historical data instead of having access to online, uh, uh, the online uh, sample the data from the environment. So this is a very promising paradigm and very. Uh, what is your you say optimal? It's the cumulative long term work. Uh, I haven't like made uh, clearer what the exact objective of the lowest enforcement learning problem is. This is just to like, is the classical question. Yeah. It can be like optimal or uh, a post policy which we are trying to indicate or something like that. And this offline reinforcement learning problem is a really interesting paradigm for real world uh, applications like autonomous uh, The reason is like we have like, lots of historical data in these kind of publications. Very difficult to make, uh, model the system itself. And then it's very expensive or unsafe to interact with these kind of systems. So here is the data assumption which the offline reinforcement learning makes. Right? So I'm replacing the learning algorithm which interacted with environment in the previous slides with just the offline data type. Right? And then the offline data is an uh, end tuple of uh, current state action and the reward it sees, and then the next state. So, this tuple uh, we have at the uh, end of the end tuples we have, and then this is called the offline data. Uh, I just want to like emphasize that uh, this offline data is generated on a single or nominal or a simulator model. But the next state is the next But look, you something distribution is known. Uh, it it can be unknown. Like, uh, some good properties. Yeah, yeah. So the coverage properties of uh, behavior data is uh, of what the state promotion is built upon. Uh, the point I wanted to make is that here, since everything is assumed that we have a simulator and then what might be the system from that. Uh, so uh, typically, like, uh, okay, other uh, systems are like built upon assuming this uh, okay. So they intersect here or like learn this model. So then we can assume the few learning algorithms to come up with one new kind of algorithm or just the value question questions where you Build the identical estimates of this uh, nominal model at some of the earlier. But since we are in the simple real gap notions, this does not work. That's uh, what I wanted to present in the next slide here. So, yeah, was the same question I was asking. The simulator model is P0 uh, for the rest of the talk. And then the real world can, the real world model can fit in the set. And then this notion is that, yeah. Um, so now I'll stay towards what the exact formulations which we did. So we use robust MVP as a framework, um, where instead of having a single model in the MVP framework, we use a set of models. And the set of models is defined as follows. Uh, it's called, I mean, uh, yeah, the name it as uncertain. It's defined around the simulator model in zero for each state and action. So we uh, using some research method until some data is low. So rho is a uh, system parameter right now for uh, robust MVP. And the distance metric can be uh, any valid product definition in as well. So now uh, or what is the R and the objective, right? So now I'm coming up with the exact objective what we want to do. So here uh, it's the maximum uh, problem of the cumulative one. So we are going to find the best quality or the worst model. So this is one of the very conservative 
objectives and they are uh, from the side of but we want to work with the type of not. So you can take the discipline with an expectation so that you can have a solved object. So that uh, uh, it's typically named as the main implementation in practice. Uh, and there are no current cases that you can in that data which we want to explore in the future. So this is one of the first objects that we talk about. Uh, they can cover the reinforcement uh, running algorithms and so on. Uh, <coughs> You can, uh, as uh, in the classical level of MVP, you can define value function notions in the progress MVP, which we call as robust value functions. Now it is easy defined for the worst case model. So value plus one is the policy as the model. And the worst model is the robust value. And then this robust value function is really useful to maximize this uh, uh, the value function to get the optimal cost. Uh, this a robust value function is really nice to define so that you can come up with value iteration and queue iteration kind of a variables at the later stages. The deep pilot commodities is that in a rich deck. Oh, yes. <clears throat> so now, uh, since I talked about what the classical offline reinforcement learning is about, I'll uh, Make the parallel connection to offline robust reinforcement learning. So now we are going to learn the optimal, optimal robust policy. Um, and the answer in this set is self is unknown. But here, if you see the, uh, if you stare at this object a bit, you would want the data coming from all the different uh, uh, models in the set. It's just kind of infeasible, but we still make a same uh, data assumption as before. Uh, so we still assume that we only have access to the data coming from a simulator model. That's these zeros inside the uh, board. Uh, and then we still want to come up with a robust reinforcement learning model. That's uh, what I want to do. Uh, make sure I highlight that to estimate the uh, objective is a very non trivial solution. I just wanted to like, bring it back to the work. Uh, robust reinforcement learning area. The first line of words are like defining what the robust reinforcement, uh, robust learning structures, and so on. Uh, and this is just the two central words from the Latin and from Colombia, and then we remember why it was a fine. Both of these words came uh, around the same uh, uh, period, which focusing on the structures of robust learning. And then the second line of words are like focusing on the learning curve. And then the third line of all the words in the robust network and then we have the same with this uh, and then also like make the statement here that um still like uh we the first time learning algorithm, but for large state states using partial approximation, it's something to get and with the usual loss in the first time learning uh as a real so we can look at MVP like a standard boundary setting as a very simple state. So there's the question and there is there. The standard impact is just to cast the idea of the question we have this for the oversense. That's an interesting. I'm not really sure. But I've only seen robust samples, uh, robust MVP notions, and this uh, kind of setting is the local. It will be mostly uh, even the offline version is not aware of it. Right. But here we can take, take, instantiate this question for start of the bandwidth. Yeah, offline okay. yeah. okay. yeah. okay. question learning setting in bandwidth is kind of very. So here, it depends that like, you only have a band of three that I can scale to a Exactly, yeah. With the robust version, might be interesting. It's not obvious, but yeah. It's not an interesting part. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, that's what I thought. 
Uh, so, yeah, before going into the learning problem, let me go to the program solution. Right? So, here we have the same question like how to find the progress policy when we answer the moving problem. So, this uh, notion of dynamic object is really useful to come up with uh, all the models, the model, model based algorithms. So here, the lowest level of data is defined as uh, the current reward part that we term it as the next value, but the next value is coming from the worst model. So instead of having a single model, we are going to be asking the worst model to return a value. Uh, and then this domain operator is nice enough so that we have a protection operation, and then probably, and then we have the unique expand operator. So since you have the uh, unique expand property, you know, I have the robust dynamic program. One of them is robust fuel operator. So you just iterate to the speed operator, cover the time, and then you get a daily policy, which is optical. So here, I just want to make it clear that since I was using the dynamic operator, I was using the dynamic operator. So the dynamic operator is Yeah, yeah. The extra robust is that. Yeah, since the object is not that. So, when you come up with the learning algorithms, row algorithm makes a huge difference. Since here, the uncertainty is not given as words. So, no, no uh, so it's not to solve this thing. Right. Yeah. So, we assume that we have a black box which gives us the next value of the word case. Computation is that the next one. And then the structure of the uncertainty set itself makes this uh, computation is back to the point. So now the question is like the learning question is the following, right? Like how we solve the rules from first and second or only use a cognitive data as a last system. So this is a RFQ algorithm, which is the Q iteration algorithm, the government from uh here and the set. Um so I just want to give the uh, high level idea of the algorithm before the, like moving on to the algorithm itself. So as we saw, the robust view of A is exact. Q is just one as T. Now we just approximate and time of day using the stretch pattern. So here we use the function of approximation of the stretch pattern. The approximation of the stretch pattern. But as, as you saw, the operator uh, that is the same uh, problem. And using the object data, you would want so, how do we like some of them without any good length of the uh, skew of the So, to resolve this, we uh, propose the following proposition that uh, is comes from the real view formulation. So, focus, let, let us now focus on the uh, theory steps for the measure. Now, the robust learning of the PQ can be equivalently written in the following form. We can know the exact form. Uh, there are two important questions to focus here. The first one is the following. Uh, yeah, the first one is the following. Um, 
now the expectation has now depending only on the simulated models is low. So now we can like estimate this inner objective however we want since we are isolated in all the data coming from PC works. And the next important uh, property is that the optimization itself is not defined with the scalar optimization problem, which is a simple one which we can solve. <coughs> so this technique, but, uh, as I was mentioning earlier, it's uh, really popular in ML, it's a uh, distribution of this optimality. Uh, the challenge just here uh, is obvious from the MVP version of uh, the dynamics uh, community that was in such a <coughs> Like, uh, not the context of the is the for what data is. Yeah, yeah. So, the problem was very intuitive. Like, I'm saying that we were saying the some data model up to some so here is the very uh, deformation helps us do this row parameter inside the object. So here is the row. So this kind of uh, equivalence between parameters and uh, kind of But if you want to get this parameter, you can also get it hard. What is happening here? If this form is exact, I mean, this form is for the distance between this. But it is different for other systems. And it's uh, for KNL and uh, that's where uh, we have like, more non linearity coming to the uh, So this is, the, like, uh, this is the reason why we focus on TV as of now. Uh, we have a current work, I mean, upcoming work, that can be more than the old. So we are trying to solve uh, in a general case of all the challenges. So this is the uh, focus of the yeah. Yeah, that's the main thing. Yeah. Yeah. So I can mention one interpretation for it for the TV person that goes on very soon. This objective is very close to it. The new CY has the unit and simple method. Yeah. This is exactly what the traditional factor is. That is one version and one factor. No other. Nothing perfect. Next version is what is the same Oh, so we went to bed and he brought some technical capital. This is one of the connections to be focused on the same time. Yeah, this is the uh, distance cycle. In the final problem, we were considering the default as the only integrated model until some pages go. So this dot. So the interpretation of this objective itself is necessarily hard. So that's the reason why I go back to the primary problem to think of the intuition. We know the sense in the P set is constant. So error in the P2 is zero or oh this is exact this is just the dual deformation. Yeah. This is when we know the structure column structure is the we can so much check that. Here still like the data is coming from this one. We haven't yet gone into the learning situation as well. So yeah, now the object is to like come up with the learning algorithm to estimate this, right? So that's what I'm uh, talk about in the next slide. The following thing. So as we saw that the 
outside data was coming from a behavioral data view. Now this problem, we must have to solve this optimization problem for each and every state action pair by state, which can be feasible for last state and action. So what we do is like the scalar data are uh, back in a dense function like the function optimization. So back in our L1 space, so that um, I read it this data with two of SA, which is a function of SA. So now we solve this optimization problem as a function of optimization problem. So these two are equal. The equations in terms of uh, this is one critical step we want to do if you have to go to the last case of action. So now uh, instead of solving uh, the earlier problem for instance, each state diagonal, just solve one single chart, one little function optimization problem. So, this expansion optimization problem is kind of uh, if you do to think about the Q values. Uh, we have a Q uh, value for each state function, just like that, we have a, a dual function uh, value for the state function, which is like representing all the our robustness is all about. The exact interpretation is kind of interesting, but kind of uh, I can get you So yeah, as I mentioned, since these two problems are equal, we just solve this uh, you know, like a, um uh, enter till this many sessions, I think also. So now just to pack everything in our algorithm and just uh, take it to the algorithm, right? So we have the offline data coming from a single simulator model. And then we have two function factors. As I was mentioned, one of the function factors seems to like represent all the dual functions, and one of them is F is to represent all the Q values. So now we share the Q value. And then in each two, we have two steps. Uh, the first one is to like estimate what the dual function value is, which is coming from the uh, loss which we developed earlier. So we replace the exact loss with the end of the loss here. And then the next step is to estimate what the next the robust Q update, which is coming from the V square number. So here, like uh, if you want to think about it, then the classical Q iteration uh, we generally like put the target as the next Q value. Here, uh, the next value is coming from the dual recovery. So here the exact expression is not important because this is coming from the dual recombination that it goes to the so here is the classical problem is like R plus gamma times the next value. So here is the complicated expression is coming from the dual recombination. Uh, and then after a bunch of iterations, we get the three decomps of the uh, this is the algorithm. Uh, any questions regarding the algorithm? Uh, so now I'll just show that. So if you take the problems of the best case, I mean, maybe in terms of the closeness of convergence or two. Yeah, yeah. And so in fact, like uh, the same thing, I guess, uh, some of them are the offline guys, right? Like comparatively uh, optimal mm -hmm. over the value. Okay. That's the next slide. So before giving the result, I'll just walk you through the assumptions, right? Uh, I'll just walk you through the intuition of the assumptions. Um, the first one is what the coverage uh, assumption on the data is about. So that typically like asks us to like cover all the distributions coming from the uh, simulator model. So yeah, that is the first one. This, the second and the third assumption that that's pointing to the functional classes itself. Like how good the functional classes are yeah. like, uh, epsilon F is zero if our function class f contains the optimal Q function and uh, similar interpolation can be done for x, y, and z. So these two are not available by two because they are relying on the function class. So now <clears throat> what the exact gravity is referring. So we have the five IFQI algorithm policy applications. And let me see the initial state distribution where we start at. <clears throat> so now, the, what's the gap between the value functions that's going into RFQI algorithm? 
Now we want to also give like what the exact performance of our API is all about and practice as well. Right? So um, we simulated on uh, like most of the major code tools. I'm just showing one of the graphs. Uh, the x axis is the simple L gap, one of the physics parameters you can do. For example, the joint friction loss, which is a friction loss in the new joint called the neuron output. Uh, and y axis is maybe what the LK language work. So now there are only two graphs here. Like RFI is a black curve, and the red curve is the FBI, which is the non dovish version, which typically works well on the simulator. This is what it works on. Like, uh, zero is, value zero is, uh, and there's no single real gap. Then both of them perform really well. RFI works really well because. Um, <coughs> I mean, the hopper, we observe that even if you change uh, its parameter a bit, uh, the same similar policy will work on the non uh, simple well gap zero version. So now, uh, then we increase the simple well gap, as you can see, FQI, we degrade the bit. And our FQI is actually a very slow. I mean, the gaps are really unintuitive. And, uh, Show you this video. Yeah, so in the hopper environment, um, uh, there are like friction losses in every joint. Can, so if we change the friction loss of one of the joints, and that is the simple real gap parameter which we change. Yeah. I'll show you the other uh, kind of uh, friction losses in now, uh, like uh, physics parameters in the video. Let me Sure, that just give me a moment. So, here, um, yeah, we trained uh, RFQI and FQI on the simulator model of the uh, of uh, simulations, which is the nominal setting. Now, when we deployed that policy on the nominal model, as expected, it was in the end of the world, as expected. But when we deploy that FBI policy on a uh, sort of model of joint damping, uh, joint damping is another of the uh, physics parameters and hoppers. Uh, it typically takes up to one or uh, two hops. But as you can see, Alex is kind of a very really good job. This is not intuitive. Let me uh, show you a, a fun physics parameter which we change. We change gravity. And increase gravity by 20 percent. Uh, think of this as like training your uh, like model on Earth and uh, deploying the policy on Moon. Uh, FBI and PPC are not like adjusting to that change, but notice that RFI is taking a really long time as you would expect like, for how we want to run on Moon or something like that. Uh, another interesting. Uh, Temporary of that change was this leg joint stiffness. When you want to change, uh, I mean, when you increase the stiffness of your leg joints, you will expect to like, push more on your joint and your another jump, which is what RFK is right? Like it's putting more forces on the joint so that you can lift off. 
And I just want to point out that TD3 is a really powerful online reinforcement learning algorithm Yeah, yeah. yeah. The benchmarks are like long robust algorithms. Yeah. So how does it perform to like other corpus uh how does it perform? So when we did this work actually uh for large space space and animation spaces, uh, there are no other the deep learning based algorithms. All of them were like working on simple uh, uh, like, so, like, yeah. so the first one uh, actually, so focus more on of okay. yeah. So also I have like that uh, experiment uh, so, that uh, uh, then yeah, uh, the main uh, algorithm and then when Russian focus more first more then I I think on the other stuff. Uh, uh, the papers were like focusing on the online enforcement learning as well. Then this was 10 years in every two years. Okay. Uh, for example, uh, we give online robust enforcement learning as well. Uh, there are two parts here, right? Like policy evaluation and policy improvement. So the two parts are like it will be robust d square method for policy evaluation, which is based on the Africa part of And then, yes, this is just the policy evaluation. So, like policy by the estimate of the global values. We wanted to also give the policy evaluation method, which we actually come up to our ultimate policy. So, another interesting line of work is the given type. Characters for the finest state of action spaces. So, here the latest work was like tightening of the gap in the state space itself. Horizon dependence is still suboptimal, which we are uh, still working on. So, here are different types of ones that we need to decide and different types of uh, guarantees. And the lower one as well is kind of, uh, I would say, not in the horizon. <laughs> Yeah, the yeah. And the low bond is the non version. Uh, we are currently developing no bond for different cases as well. Yeah. So we want to give this separate notion for company because it depends conservatism, like it depends on who you ask what conservatism that only is what they want. TV is a very good notion of conservatism. So that's what my upcoming work is about. Uh, we want to also give like <laughs> algorithms for different conservatism. <laughs> Maybe I'm sure. the example of the popular one way too much, but typically you would have uh, like a discrepancy between the simulator and the real environment for deep or certain states. But new to the gravity example is not that. So, but this seems like a very it's very worst case, but it's all important. Yeah. Wondering if you're a conservative person. This is the most conservative, but less conservative than the one in the other medicine. Like you take a bunch of different environments and add them with them. Come up with two different So that it performs very well across the domain. I mean, across. Same environment, but up with different parameters. It really works well in practice. Uh, but yeah, there are those characteristics in that state. 
But I expect to pick the content under the so we know this uh, relation between the and so So I just representing the comparison and the figures x not theta as the comparison. So, since we did it more comparative than the other factors, we would want to come up with often new customer and management for a system where that is. So, we have an upcoming work where we build this kind of function for a general final version, um, not just for TV. Yeah. So, but it's still very challenging because of the real economy for itself. So, yeah, that's why we come up with. And then the second work is about the first thing in the first environment problem that is focused uh, in the market. So, for example, uh, this article from author Abu Dhabi uh, spent uh, three minutes people to compare the XAP check or so on, even if, the, uh, even if they uh, like. It's all the yoga structure of the different kind of uh, so yeah here we are trying to give an benefit of the reward as zero can define similar value functions for different uh, reward functions r r i through r m or something like that now the lowest transient object is to like also satisfy the value function uh, of the time before the minimum actually works. So this is the constraint that's focused to the contemporary object. Uh, it says it's, we are finding it really hard to the of these two subjects, robust notions coming in the future. Uh, so yeah, uh, we are trying to create a realistic reality, but if we do then we are trying to work and Interesting extensions, yeah. So, yeah, I uh, just wanted to conclude this uh, because thus far we have like now uh, different uh, rules in personal learning as well as on different spaces. We have your linear function, contribution, and general function. And then, yeah, the near future directions are like uh, we are moving into multi systems as well. Currently, there are more robots than creating parameters and think about it. That is what we are in that. And then uh, we are also aiming at the limitations on the perspective of robustness. Uh, we have a work on but kind of really limited where we even have either the expert data from some different uh most of us uh, in the world. Yeah, uh and uh The population you have this uh, robust collection of function problems. Simulation. How can you simulate that of in robot? You pick one of the distributions among them, or did you mean? So that is the notion of why we want to have access to it. So what is that? To be practical, that is the stuff for a popular subject. They thought of it for the thing. The thing was done on this simulator in which we have access to And the RFA algorithm, which we have, is robust enough so that when we change the parameter, it's still it works with the That's the key. I don't have it. It said all the farmers have it from the world before. Okay. Private problem. And I'll make a better model. So now the real information we're having is to capture it and then find out the simulator. So the reason why we 
you can just get away with uh, uh, the data point and you can get away with it. Well, the yeah, it's a very new and this is uh unproductive version uh model which is available in the end. So after it's coming from one of the open uh proprietary or proper something, then we have can take for that. So I just want to mention one more thing that in ML there is a notion of training set, testing set, a different notion. In reinforcement learning, there's no such notion, and that's where we want to bring in the uh, different Business time testing and learning can be actually different from the simulator itself. This model is kind of very really ignored in now. It's not like that. Okay. 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 Probably like the formulation flow would be different. Who learned? Let's say you start with the policy that you learned on uh, PC and using the standard and work. The I guess the question would be that now if I give you some information about P, mm -hmm. can you put the change this five stuff? So and what you do is you from scratch learning a policy which is mm -hmm. yeah, but let's say what happened? It is a policy. It is not 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 a Thank you.